to begin by acknowledging that we're gathered this evening on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. And as part of our collective responsibility to implement the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, this acknowledgement is one small way that we can come together, seek to decolonize the spaces that we occupy, and remember the devastating and ongoing effects of colonialism. Je vais maintenant vous expliquer le format du débat en anglais uh, et en français. Uh, tonight's event is being broadcast live by Rogers TV and streamed to the Overbrook Community Association uh, Facebook account. A few moments ago, we randomly selected uh, the order in which the candidates will be delivering their opening statements, and you can see they're now seated in that order. Each candidate will have one and a half minutes to deliver an opening statement following which we'll begin with the question and answer portion of the evening. While we will not be taking questions from the floor this evening, residents were invited to submit questions in advance, and these were compiled and consolidated and will form the basis for tonight's discussion. Each question will be put to candidates at a single table. Candidates seated at that table will then have one minute to answer the question, and we do ask candidates that you please confine your answer to the question that's been asked. Uh, please also, and I cannot emphasize this enough, uh, please respect the time limits because if we start going off time with 16 candidates, we're going to have a real problem. The first candidate to start at each table will rotate, uh, shifting who gets the first and last word. All candidates will be invited to respond to the same number of questions, including at least one English question and one question in French. In addition, each candidate has been provided with a chit like this which empowers them to answer one question that was not posed to them. So one question that's uh, for a different table. Uh, if we have time remaining before the wrap up, we'll have a couple short, snappy personal questions to uh, fill the remaining time, uh, following which each candidate will be given one minute for a cl closing statement. And there will be at least a half hour remaining at the end of this portion for you to uh, mingle with the candidates and ask them your questions offline. Alors, en français, il y a quelques instants, on a, uh, nous avons tiré uh, les noms des candidats pour déterminer qui serait assise à, <laughs> à quelle table. Uh, et vous les voyez ici uh, devant vous. Uh, L'événement de ce soir est diffusé en direct par uh, Rogers et sur le compte Facebook de l'Association uh, communautaire d'Overbrook. Chaque candidat aura une minute, pour, uh, et demi, une minute et demie pour faire une déclaration d'ouverture. Ensuite, nous commencerons la partie questions et réponses de la soirée. Bien que nous n'aurons pas de questions de l'Assemblée ce soir, les résidents ont été invités à soumettre leurs questions d'avance. Celles-ci ont été compilées et consolidées et constituent la base de la discussion ce soir. Chaque question sera posée aux candidats à une seule table. Les candidats auront une minute pour répondre et nous demandons aux candidats de limiter leur réponse à la question qui a été posée. Veuillez respecter aussi ces limites, car, comme vous pouvez l'imaginer, avec tant de candidats, cela sera essentiel pour que nous puissions finir à l'heure. Le premier candidat à prendre la parole à sa table changera avec chaque question. Tous les candidats seront invités à répondre au même nombre de questions, dont au moins une question en anglais et une question en français. De plus, chaque candidat recevra un « cheat » ce qui lui permettra de répondre à une question posée au candidat à une autre table. Et puis, je m'excuse, euh, s'il nous reste un peu de temps avant, la, avant de conclure, euh, avec le temps supplémentaire, je vais demander des questions moins sérieuses et plutôt personnelles. Chaque candidat n'aura que 5, euh, 15 secondes pour répondre. Les candidats auront ensuite une minute, chacun et chacune, pour faire une déclaration finale. Il y aura au moins une demi-heure après euh, la séance officielle pour socialiser et discuter avec les candidats. J'ai vraiment hâte euh, d'entendre la discussion. Alors, comme ça, on va commencer avec les euh, déclarations d'ouverture. We'll start with the opening statement. And the floor goes first to Mr. Maurice Lamirande. Vous avez une minute et demie. Oh, il, faut, il faut prendre le micro, je m'excuse. Et on va partager le micro entre les deux tables. Merci. Bonsoir tout le monde. Merci d'être là. Euh, mon nom est Maurice Lemirand. Euh, je suis candidat pour euh, Ludo Rockcliffe parce que j'ai des intentions assez euh, solides pour euh, travailler pour Ludo Rockcliffe. 
dans mon, si vous regardez mon dépliant, je vais avoir une table ronde que je vais réunir une personne dans chaque zone de Rideau Rockcliffe afin de m'aider à prendre des décisions qui seront bonnes pour Rideau Rockcliffe, pour les résidents de Rideau Rockcliffe. Ce n'est pas Maurice Lemurand qui va prendre des décisions, c'est le groupe qu'on va se réunir à tous les trois mois. I have in my plan a round table that we will meet every three months, that we will have one person in watch in each zone of Rideau Rockcliffe, so we can sit every three months, discuss about the problem, issues, we can talk about it. Some people asked me earlier what I think about the bridge that they're talking about. I said, it's not my decision. We will sit at the table, we'll see what people want, not me, because it's nice to say, yes, I'm for the bridge, no, I'm against the bridge, We'll have a round table representing Rideau Rockcliffe completely, and we can take a right decision and work for the people, not work for Maurice Lemiron. Thank you very much. Merci. Alors, on, peut, on peut passer le micro à Monsieur Idriss Bentaïr. Your minute and a half is over, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maurice. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my name is Ben Tahir. I am an RCAF veterans of officer veteran, and I have been living in Ottawa for several decades. I uh, have worked with the federal, provincial, and municipal projects. Uh, these are pro bono, didn't charge anybody anything, even individuals, uh, organizations such as the Bosnians, Kosovo, Turks, um, um, Libyans, uh, Somalis, anybody, any organization had any trouble, they've called upon me and I tried to resolve that issue. I'm an information scientist by profession and I spend my time using the information science models uh, to effectively bring a project to an end. And that is, has been my uh, main course of uh, work. I served with the federal government, with the Air Force, and uh, now I'm retired, and I'm willing to work for your organization and for any other uh, person living in the city. I'd want to change the, the city itself, the image, uh, put a bypass from Edwards, um, Ontario, to Stittsville, so all the heavy traffic that will be coming here for Amazon will be directed through there and not clog our already clogged streets. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to suggest that the candidates stand just at the table because I think we're going to lose a lot, of, if that's okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bruce Faulkner. Thank you. Again, my name is uh, Bruce Faulkner. I am a lifelong resident of the city of Ottawa. 52 years of age and my background is in transportation. I have the unique insight to working in the LRT tunnels, West Portal, and uh, some of the OSAG developments. And I really want to bring to City Council what everybody on the stage is probably going to say tonight, and truly I want to bring it, and that's transparency. Transparency to use people who didn't get it by not having a city councilor sitting at the table when they passed the vote for $4.6 billion. I want to have transparency in the way we fund the food banks and how they're run and why there's no resolve to food banks. I believe that if we're going to fund a food bank, in the end we should reduce the numbers of people using food banks, not pro propagate homeless shelters on Montreal Road also is another issue, excuse me, um, and the development at 333 Montreal Road is an issue I want to look into. I believe that we better serve the community when we take homeless people out of homeless shelters and give them sh actually homes. 333 would be a prime location for seniors resident. We could take them out of the 380 Murray buildings, the McLaren buildings, the Lepage buildings. We could put them into the, the 333 Montreal Road development. And then when those apartments become available in, in McLaren, we can then put the homeless people. They're being housed right now, 50% homeless shelter in McLaren and 50% seniors. It's unacceptable. And I want to change that. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is 
Kasha Adamic. You got it, that's me. Anyways, good evening everyone. My name is Kasha Adamic and I'm running to be your next city councilor for Rita Rockliffe. Uh, I'm proud to call this community our home. My, fam my husband and I have moved here to the community over almost 10 years ago now and it was an easy choice to move here. Our community here is one of the most beautiful in the entire city. And I'm dedicated to protecting our green space here and making sure uh, high rises, which there are many here in the community uh, and throughout the city, have composting programs. Uh, I started my career off working with at-risk youth out in social housing communities out in the West End. I transitioned into the same line of work working for the Ottawa Police, and now I'm still keeping Canadians safe working at the Parole Board of Canada. I had the privilege of working on Parliament Hill and at City Hall, and uh, I certainly have political experience, and I'm ready to work for you on day one. Uh, community safety has been a priority and a big part of my life and my career, so certainly implementing and reinstating community policing in our ward and in our city is a top priority for me, and making sure that we have dependable, reliable, and interconnected transits, transit routes here in our community is essential. You folks know that you know some of us here are lucky that we live close to the LRT station, but many neighbors to the north and to the east don't have that uh, accessibility, so having these local routes is imperative and uh, I'm the only candidate who lives in the ward, has political experience, and is ready to be a strong, independent voice for you at the council table. So vote for me, Kasia Damick, on April 15th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next statement will be from Jerry Kovacs. Uh, good evening, everyone. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs, et les enfants aussi. My name is Jerry Kovacs. If you liked Toby Nussbaum, you're going to like me. <laughs> Just like Toby, I'm a lawyer. I have experience working in the legal department of a municipal corporation. I know how City Hall works. I know how it, how it operates. And I'm going to bring the same style of representation that Toby Nussbaum brought to City Hall. Because as a lawyer, it's my job to represent you. You give the instructions to your city councillor, who then goes to City Hall and represents your views and your concerns at the council table. I'm going to be approachable, effective, and on your side. Now, I'm going to use my experience in listening to you, and how will I do that? In a number of different ways. I'm going to do something that no city councillor has done yet in Ottawa. I'm going to open a community office in this ward, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, so that people can come down and have meetings, talk to me, talk to the staff, constantly keep us informed about what's important to you, and also be a place where we, where we can help you solve your problems, because you know what's best for your street. I'm going to have a community advisory council that also does the same thing, and I'm going to donate 10% of my salary every year to community organizations and events right here in Ward 13. So thank you very much. We're going to have a great meeting. Chris Penton. Good evening, bonsoir. I am Chris Penton. I'm a local guy. I was born in Lyndon Lee. I grew up in Manor Park. Uh, I live, now live just off MacArthur. If you can picture me with an ugly straw hat, you might recognize me as the founder of the Beechwood Market. I started that six years ago, and it's gone very well. Thank you very much for coming, if you did. Um, pour plusieurs années, j'étais président de la communauté, uh, l'association communautaire de Vanier. Uh, au moment, je suis un membre de la board de la ZAC de Cartier Vanier. As a board member of the Cartier Vanier BIA, I am currently learning a lot more about uh, the limitations and the opportunities for businesses in our ward. I believe that economic development can help with many challenges here in Ward 13. C'est une conversation énorme, mais ici, j'ai une petite idée. The city did their ground floor uh, commercial study in 2014 in developing for developing neighborhoods. The approved bylaw allowed for ordinary homes to be zoned for small scale commercial operations. On the main floor of your house, you could open a barbershop, cafe, or tailor. I would look at uh, streamlining that process for uh, um, entrepreneurs here in Ward 13. Along with greater commercial activity would come uh, more desirable development, improved transportation routes, and pedestrian traffic, which is proven to uh, produce safer communities. Je voudrais faire, finir avec ça. Dans un quartier 30% francophone, C'est important. Non, c'est impérissible. Oh, je m'excuse. 
Merci, Chris. <rire> euh, je vous présente Oriana Gabirano. Oh. <rire> Bonjour. Hi, my name is Oriana Gabirano. I'm 35 years old. I'm a public relations specialist, and I'm also a mom to a 14-year-old. I'm a woman of action and a community member as I sit on the board of six community organizations, including the Vanier Community Center, the De La Salle Public School, the Ottawa Transit Riders. My platform is essentially based on a preventive approach with concrete actions for the mandate. I believe that long-term planning with a preventive lens is a sustainable and cost-efficient way of developing vibrant communities. I look forward to providing concrete examples throughout the night. Bonjour, mon nom est Oriana Gabirano. J'ai 35 ans. Je suis spécialiste en relations publiques. Je suis la maman d'une jeune fille de 14 ans. Et je suis également une femme d'action active dans la communauté. Je suis sur le conseil de six organisations communautaires différentes, incluant le centre communautaire de Vanier, l'école secondaire publique de La Salle et le comité des usagers du transport en commun. Ma plateforme est basée essentiellement sur une approche préventive avec des actions concrètes parce que je crois qu'une planification à long terme avec une optique préventive est un moyen durable et rentable de favoriser les communautés euh, dans lesquelles nous vivons. Et je vais vous donner des exemples concrets euh, durant la semaine. Monsieur Johan Hamels. Bonsoir tout le monde. Merci d'être ici. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks to the Overbrook Association to organize this event in the first week that I can use back my bike. <laughs> in the last eight weeks, I, worked, I knocked on 6,500 6, doors and talked with nearly 2,000 people, and they gave me a list of things they would like to see improve in their neighborhoods. These people want to see more transparency in the city. They want to have the citizens taken serious by the city. They want to provide safer streets for themselves, their kids, and their grandkids. And they want to see the character and the heritage of their neighborhoods protected. But most of the things I heard about is the fact that people want to see an improvement and an expansion of affordable housing. Au même temps, moi j'apporte des, des valeurs de moi-même et de mon équipe dans cette campagne. Comme politicien, j'ai un mantra. Il faut avoir le courage de voir loin pour faire tes prochains pas. As a politician, I bring my own values. I have a mantra that I've used in my political career in the last 30 years, and that is that you have to be willing to look far ahead before you take the next step. The two attitudes that will guide me as a counselor is to listen to you and together with you find solutions for the problems you have in your neighborhood and secondly, to have this long-term view to assist the city. Ralston King. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Ralston King. Thank you everybody for attending uh, this, this gathering. It's very important because we have a very important decision to make. Uh, we're choosing our next counselor in this by-election. One of the reasons why I'm running, well, there are two reasons why I'm running. So one is I really do believe that we need to have experienced leadership around the table. Uh, I've lived here for 15 years. Actually, I walked here because this is my community center. This is my community association. So I actually walked here. But I am the president of the community association here in Overbrook. I'm also the treasurer of the Rideau Rockcliffe Community Resource Center on Donald Street, which provides all of the social services for low-income people here in this ward. And because of all the volunteering that I've been doing, trying to increase the quality of life in this neighborhood, uh, the police services recently appointed me chair of their community equity council, attempting to build better race relations with the police. What's the second reason that I'm running? 
Um, we need experienced leadership, but I think that we also need a progressive vision at City Hall. We need somebody standing up for communities rather than developers. I think that we need a fair freeze at OC Transpo. We need to have affordable transit, affordable, uh, affordable housing in the city. I've been fighting for that over the last 10 years, and I will fight for you as your a city councilor if you do me the honor of electing me. Vote King. Miklos Horvath. That's okay. Um, maybe put your yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Miklo Shorvath, and I'm a resident of Rideau Rockcliffe. I am bilingual, et je suis très ouvert d'écouter votre préoccupation, et je vais essayer de, de répondre à vos besoins comme avec soin. Earlier this week, most of us <clears throat> attended another All Candidates meeting just down the road at the Francesca apartment buildings or building. Uh, the issue of transparency came up in relation to the LRT, LRT phase two. As we know, we hear a lot about transparency in this town on a daily basis. However, we don't see much of it. <clears throat> Given that, as well as the extremely low turnout in our last election here in Ward 13 in October, 37% of people turned out. I would like to, uh, <clears throat> the candidates running in this by-election to demonstrate our collective leadership by acknowledging the frustrations of voters and proactively stating if they live in the ward or do not, <clears throat> if they are bilingual or they are not, as well as committing to releasing uh, their donors, who, who, the donors who, who, commit, who donored, donned, donned their money to uh, the campaign when asked at the door. In the name of transparency, I believe that all voters should be aware of this information before entering into the election booth. I encourage you to demand this from all candidates when they come to your door. While the best candidate as selected by you, the voters, <clears throat> might be one who lives in Orleans, it is unilingual English. I believe that it is important that voters know in advance so they can make an informed decision. Thank you. Monsieur Marc Dorgeville. My name is Marc Dorgeville, and I want Ottawa to take stronger action on social and environmental issues. I'm a problem solver with the skills of an engineer and a climate scientist. I'm also a community financial worker, and I understand the challenges faced across our world and our city. With my family, I live in Rideau Rockcliffe, and we care deeply about being part of a vibrant and engaged community. To see a real progress on poverty and climate change, those two issues need to be the top priority of your next city councilor. Since the first official day of the campaign, I've heard about your concerns about traffic, speeding, infrastructure, unreliable buses, the lack of affordable housing, the broken planning process, the safety in our neighborhoods. These issues can all be seen through the lenses of poverty and climate change. These issues all need to be addressed to build better neighborhoods and a brighter future. So I'm looking forward tonight to discussing this issue with you pour vous faire découvrir ma vision d'une ville humaine et respectueuse de l'environnement. And now here's Penny Thompson. Thank you. My name is Penny Thompson, and I'm a proud resident of Rideau Rock for 30 years. Our city is changing quickly. In Ju by July 1st, we will have a million residents in Ottawa. Now is the time to make decisions and contemplate what our children and our children will need from our city. My key priorities are dependable transit, affordable taxes, 
better communication, adequate and affordable housing solutions, and dependable transit. Oh, road safety. If elected, I will work with the Rideau Rockcliffe Community Resource Center to expand the post-incident report model and look to the success of Vision Jasmine in addressing violence in our communities. Thinking to the future, street design needs to be community-led. If elected, I will meet with Safer Roads Ottawa so that we will see the first Vision Zero community pilot project right here in this ward. I am prepared to lead this work. I am committed to increasing the livability of all residents of Rideau Rockcliffe, but doing so effectively and efficiently with your tax dollars. You can trust that I have the experience. Thank you. <laughs> We will rule with an iron fist here when it comes to time, as you can see. <laughs> Here's Sheila Perry. Good evening. Good evening, bonsoir. Uh, je m'appelle Sheila Perry. I'm a long-term resident of this ward and very proud. Je suis très fière uh, dans le, la ville et uh, dans cette quartier over Brook. Why am I seeking your vote on also April 5th and the uh, 15th. It's all about livable neighborhoods. Um, we need this very much across Ottawa, not just in our own ward. This requires leadership, it requires vision, and it requires action. My experience with leadership is including as president of all the community associations of Ottawa. I'm also the president of the Ottawa Council of Women and a past president here very proudly of Overbrook. What I see as advocacy and vision, opportunities to, for safer roads, reliable public transportation, affordable housing and environment, those are all very important to us. As I look for the action and some of the actions of what we've been able to complete, I think we see this in some of the youth projects around us. We see 15, or sorry, 32 community gardens out here. City planners have adopted this thinking as we start to look at our official plan, and I'm very par proud to be part of that. So as you look ahead in voting, please vote for Sheila, a voice of experience. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila, and thank you all of you to coming out tonight, and uh, thank you, Rogers, for covering this. Uh, you know, when I was here last year with Toby, it was just the two of us up here on stage, and I'll admit there were times I felt rather lonely, but I feel, I feel very loved tonight. Uh, <laughs> I ran for, my name is Peter Hike. I ran for Ottawa City Council last year because I felt that the city could do more on the environment, on affordable housing, community policing, and access to public transit. I'm running again this year because I still, excuse me, I still believe that we could do more. There's much more progress to be made, and I made a promise to all of you that I would remain involved on these and other issues no matter what happens. So I thank all of you for coming tonight. I look forward to hearing your questions, and uh, let's get started. Thank you. Next up is Jamie Kwong. Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Mon nom c'est Jamie. I'm so excited to be here today amongst good company. So my background has been serving the community in various ways for the last 10 years. First, I'm going to say I'm 36 because everyone always thinks I'm way younger, and I'm not. I've been working in professionally improving the community for over 15 years in various capacities. And so one of my recent roles has been the executive director of the Vanier Business Improvement Area. That meant improving our main streets, MacArthur Avenue, Montreal Road, and Beechwood Avenue. So listening to the concerns of the small businesses there and the community on making those streets safer, more vibrant, and drawing in more businesses and supporting the small businesses there. These are your Mucklesons. These are your Louis Pizza, who are always up to the plate to donate to our community events. It was important to see them thrive so that they could give back to the community. And so for me, it's always about the cycle of economic development, economic prosperity for all. So how can we each play a role in making our community healthier, safer, and more vibrant, and we're more proud of? I always want to include people too. Whenever we have big ideas, how do we engage people early? How do we listen to the feedback of the community? How do we get that feedback to develop the solutions that work for each of the different neighborhoods so that we're developing things that work for you? 
So one of the things I want to bring to the table is engagement and taking that and using that to make solutions that work for each community. You can find out more about me at my website, jamiekwong.ca, or come talk to me tonight. And I look forward to more questions from you all. Thank you. Et finalement, il va prendre un petit verre d'eau. Oh, OK. Oh, il y a un autre. Patrick Mayangui. Si je peux, je vais venir ici. Bonjour tout le monde, euh, je m'appelle Patrick Mayangui et euh, je viens ici devant vous parce que je suis l'enfant de la communauté. Je viens devant vous parce que je vais changer le narratif de ce quartier. Je vais continuer quest ce que Toby a laissé. Toby, Toby nous a frappé dans ma porte en 2014, 2018. J'ai travaillé pour lui, j'ai connu sa vision. Je vais continuer sa vision. Comme Let's go to English. Just like I said, you know, I want to continue the vision that Toby has left behind. What the city needs, what this community needs is to come together. We have to come together from people from different walks of life. We need to come together as an association, as a city, and we have to think and be bold. I am bold. I'm standing right here. I'm 29 years old. I'm a recent uh, master's graduate of uh, European studies and Russian studies. I speak four languages, but I look at the youth. Where is the youth? I want the youth to stand right here with me. And I want I want to change the narrative. Again, I, I want to basically reflect what has not been seen before. Again, impossible is nothing. We can do so much more as a community. We've seen the limits of what the government can do, but we haven't even tapped into what the potentiality of what this community can do. Rita Rockcliffe, Ensemble New, 2018, oh sorry, 2019. Let's vote for Patrick Mayangi on April 15. Merci beaucoup. Film Dunk. Okay, so now we get into the, the meat and potatoes of this thing. And we're on time so far. <laughs> la, la première question sera dirigée au candidat à la table numéro un. Uh, the first question will be for table one, and it will be a question in English. Uh, and the candidates will answer in the order in which they're seated, and the question is as follows. The incidence of violence involving weapons in the neighborhood is alarming. What will you do as counselor to tackle this violence in Overbrook? It's a really good question, and actually this is something that we uh, really uh, all, I guess, not only me, but I guess it's the, uh, everybody is concerned about this here in this room. And what should we be doing about this? Uh, I believe that we should uh, have like neighbor watch, which we already have in some places. We should have probably more police in the area. Uh, when I talk about police in the area, I believe that we have time for to get more security in the area, more l lights and m more security. And you know, I, I, got, I, I like the police a lot. I mean, police, they're, they're good, they're, they're, we need them around. But when I see police cars sitting there for hours and hours, uh, I mean, they should make a round into uh, Overbrook and those places where the, uh, the issue is, is like pretty well, uh, you know, we can see it pretty well that it's, uh, oh, it's the end. So anyway, uh, more policing, that's for sure, one thing. Okay, thank you. Seat. I'm going to pull it off the table here. Oh, get uh, well, we'll ask the candidates to please stay at the table when you uh, give your answers, <clears throat> because as you know, I'm, I'm trying to run a very tight ship here in terms of time. Uh, <coughs> Idris Ben Tahir. Uh, bonsoir, mes amis. I am uh, about the violence. I've been working since 2010 for the helpless, uh, hopeless, and homeless veterans trying to create a veterans village. Now, if we can take these people out of the streets and put them in flats, uh, which, the, uh, which are right now I'm working with the Ontario Ministry of Housing, and I saw the minister, uh, Mr. Chief uh, Clark, and he has agreed that they're creating a policy. If we move the people away from the street, we, we get fewer crimes, and then if we get rid of crimes, we get rid of drugs, and all the other issues that are pertaining uh, to homelessness, which is the main issue. 
and we are a very rich country, and Ottawa is a very rich city, and why do we have this problem here? I don't understand when we send billions of dollars abroad. Thank you. You know, we've been fighting a war on guns and gangs and drugs in the city for, geez, I ran in the last provincial election, and it was way before that. Um, we have a police services board that's appointed by a chair, by the mayor, and members of that board, and they make decisions based on hiring p more police officers to tackle this issue, and it hasn't resolved in anything. I think we, what we have to do is demand with, to our mayor and the remaining city councillors that we form a police services board from one representative of this ward and one representative of every ward in the city comprising of 23 members, and let's see what the response will be then. I think we have to take action. It's been too long. It's not getting better. And um, I think if we, if we could put somebody in the police services board position, it uh, might solve some stuff, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Faulkner. Uh, Kasha Damick. So like I mentioned, uh, I've spent a lot of my career working in the criminal justice field. Uh, certainly having a preventative approach and having diversion programs for youth to not get involved in, um, in gangs uh, certainly is an avenue that I would certainly pursue. Having more youth-based programming, whether it be in community centers like this or having some organized um, you know, facilities in, in schoolyards where folks can actually uh, get together and, and literally form community ties. Uh, ensuring that we have safe um, neighborhoods is important. Having a grassroots approach to that is even more important. Uh, I was lucky enough to sit on the Crime Stoppers board uh, here at the Ottawa Police and also the Community Watch Executive Board, and we need to have a grassroots approach. So ensuring that we reinstate community policing, uh, having those ties with the police, uh, liaising with communities is, is step one, and ensuring we have a proactive approach to policing instead of a reactive one so we can formulate closer ties uh, is also another important one. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Kovacs who will be spending one of his chits. Uh, thank you very much. I decided to use my green card because for many years I was a criminal defense lawyer. And so I have a lot of experience representing people, including criminals, um, and uh, some of the things that's involved. Now, I brought the statistics that actually show that, that violent crime has increased 20% in Ottawa in the last year. And I regularly attend Ottawa City Police Board meetings. That's one of the things I intend to do as a city councillor. I'm going to go to every Ottawa City Police Board meeting, and actually the next one is tomorrow morning um, at 11 a.m. Um, I brought with me a copy of the Police Services Board report on community policing in Ottawa, and I'm just gonna go to one particular page, page six, about what's being done. Community-based policing, reporting is very important, and various things that the police are doing that are applicable in this ward includes summer bike deployment, putting police officers on bicycles where they're closer to the community. Bikes and beef. <laughs> Improving the response side. That's your time, Mr. Kovacs, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, one minute's not very long. Uh, Oriana Gabirano. Um, I would like to speak about this because it's one of my priorities on my platform and I'm hearing a lot about policing and nothing on the prevention of that matter. So um, when you think prevention, you think social services. And it's with social services that are decentralized throughout the city that we can actually make a change. Why decentralized? Because we don't want to create ghettos. Where, uh, with, where the social determinants will favor, again, that violence. So when you have community housing, they need to be decentralized and not all in the same area. In terms of community housing also, it needs to be mixed income so that people can see different opportunities for their lives. Um, we need basically to increase the funding to social services and apply the public health approach to violent crimes. And we have another chip casher, oh. Ralston King. 
Uh, so I would like to mirror some of what Oriana has said because I've been working in this community for the longest time, especially on public uh, safety issues. Uh, we actually are trying to get more social investment here in Overbrook. We actually have a community program here in Overbrook, an after school program. Uh, and I was proud that Dr. Major Chaudhry could actually join me at my nomination because he runs a program here for, uh, for kids between seven and grade nine, um, and he cannot get funding uh, for the program. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running it. As I believe that we need strong social services to address these issues. We have to be proactive. We cannot be reactive. We actually have to ensure that our kids are not being uh, sucked into the criminal justice system. We do that by ensuring that we have strong social services. And that's the reason why I'm calling for more investment in community after school programs. Now we're going to hear from Sheila Perry. Thank you. One of the things I neglected to mention is that uh, as a school principal with a lot of experience in the public system, we had the luxury of having school resource officers. And I'm delighted to see the emphasis on the Ottawa Police Services going to look at the community services. I'm also a, a founder of Neighborhood Watch here in Overbrook. And that was a result of a door being kicked in in my own home. And how you rally these people to feel comfortable is extremely important. So it's not just about police services, it's much more than that. The other is the school resource officers, as I mentioned. We also have the CDF, the Community Development Framework. These support services are amazing. The other is the investment that we put into this through Crime Prevention Ottawa. And I'm a very proud winner of that uh, award from 2018 by Toby Nussbaum, who nominated me as the Crime Prevention Volunteer of the Year Award. So these are progresses. Mr. Mayangi. Uh, Can you try to have debate infrastructure yeah, for 16 candidates? <laughs> oh, wow. It's a little challenging. It's very challenging. So what, I've been hearing a lot that uh, we need more policing, policing, policing. This is our communities. Uh, the, the people who are committing crimes are our neighbors. What we need is basically to change the narrative. They need to see that actually people are being elevated, that most of those crimes of youth-related crimes, again, are some of these youth that are in the neighborhood, do they see other youth being raised up? I talk about this because I could be 30 seconds away from a crime. I could be, I would live in social housing. I know how it is. It's hopelessness. They need to see visibility. They need to see see me right here at the table and have a voice. Again, I work low income jobs. Again, most of our problems is not just policing, it's not just social services, it's about visibility. And I'm a visible minority, but here I am, I am visible. You guys can see me, and what we need is just to change narrative and to have people that look like them, people that act like them, young people that could inspire them. And this is why I'm running, Patrick Mayangi. Jamie Kwong. Hi there. So building healthy communities has always been my passion. So my background is actually studying criminology. So I have a master's degree in criminology. Specifically, I studied youth, at-risk youth, and how we can build a stronger community by investing in youth. That ended up, uh, so I ended up working at a women's crisis center during university, and that was my first job, actually listening to the crises of women calling the line who have been uh, sexually assaulted. So working with them and seeing how we can prevent violence against women. That's been some of my background, working in women's shelters, working in crisis centers. I'm currently a consultant uh, to Correctional Service Canada, actually. And so taking all of that and even my roles as a business improvement area, how we can combine our work with the business community, with the local community, engaging youth. So one of the key issues was vandalism in our community. The big mural on Montreal Road. So we engaged youth early to connect to artists as mentors to help feel ownership over their own community. And for me, that's how you get people connected, is you let them create the community that they want. And so it's about building upon that. Any other takers? Okay, 
la deuxième question sera en français euh, pour la table numéro 2. Le transport en commun est loin d'être optimal dans Overbrook. Comment allez-vous vous assurer un service plus efficace avec OC Transpo pour les résidents qui se déplacent en transport en commun? Et on va commencer avec M. Kovacs. Thank you very much. C'est une question très importante parce que plusieurs des personnes ici prennent les autobus. The LRT is only going to go to Saint Laurent Mall, which means that the rest of this ward will be serviced with buses, right? Because the LRT isn't going to go through this ward. It'll just go through the edge of the ward. So well, what we have to do is make sure that the buses are affordable, clean, on time, and what I propose is that what we need to do is we don't need to spend five million dollars on expensive artworks in the LRT. That money should go to buses and bus services. We don't need to spend a lot of money on lawyers who are doing contracts for the LRT. That money goes for bus services. So we make sure that we have an efficient, effective, affordable bus system in this ward working with the transportation committee to whom OC Transpo reports. Le transport commun euh, en quartier 13, c'est un grand problème. Euh, c'est quartier par quartier. Alors, dans, dans Overbrook, vous êtes plus proche à la LRT. Mais dans les, les, les quartiers plus nord, alors Beachwood, New Edinburgh, Manor Park, il faut que nous euh, fassions une joint. Alors, on a besoin des autobus qui vont de nord à sud. Le Vanier Park Quay Saint Laurent, ça fait beaucoup de sens de faire les autobus nord-sud toute la journée. Si vous, pouvez, si vous connaissez Toronto, si vous êtes sur, sur les beaches, c'est assez facile de vous rendre à, sub, au, à la subway. Alors ici, on peut, euh, on peut implémenter la même idée. Je, de Beachwood, tout, 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 et ça, ça peut aussi être convenant pour Overbrook. Merci. Donc, le, le transport en commun, l'inefficacité du transport en commun, c'est un problème qui touche toute la ville, pas seulement euh, Overbrook. La réalité, c'est qu'en ce moment, ça ne marche pas. J'ai envie de donner une chance au train léger, car on nous promet qu'une fois qu'il sera sur place, euh, il y aura plus de services dans les communautés qui ne sont pas desservies par le train léger. Par contre, en attendant, il y a des actions concrètes qu'on peut prendre. Et une de ces actions-là, il y a le, le, le groupe de défense des usagers du transport qui est mis en place en ce moment et qui sera lancé le 27 avril. Euh, vous pouvez regarder euh, euh, sur les réseaux sociaux pour le groupe de défense des droits des, euh, des usagers du transport. Et c'est ce groupe-là qui va en fait être la voix des usagers pour qu'on soit entendu parce que ça fait des mois et quelques années même qu'on n'est pas entendu à la table d'Aussi Transpo et à la table de la Commission des transports d'Ottawa. Le transport en commun, c'est en réalité l'outil que toute la communauté doit utiliser. Euh, ça, c'est mon rêve aussi. En 2020, en réalité, toute notre ville va, de, va devoir se déplacer sans les fossiles, euh, les, les, les carburants fossiles. Euh, et ça veut dire que le LRT a son rôle à jouer, mais le grand défi est d'amener les gens au LRT. Moi, je propose, pourquoi pas, que si le OC Transport achète des bus électriques, les utiliser d'abord ici à Overbrook. Alors, on va voir M. Horvath. OK. Bonjour. Euh, maintenant, euh, dans notre quartier, les transports en commun euh, arrivent ou fonctionnent d'une façon de 62 à l'heure. Donc, ce n'est pas 100 c'est 62 Presque 20 des de autobus sont tôt. Ça, c'est un grand problème. Parce que si vous, êtes, si vous arrivez au euh, le bus stop jusqu'à deux minutes euh, avant le, 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 le temps pour le, le bus et le bus est passé tu dois euh, 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 attendre pour 20 minutes ou 30 minutes 
Donc, premièrement, ce n'est pas nécessaire d'investir avec l'argent pour le moment, mais pour assurer que le, les, auto, le, les conducteurs de l'autobus euh, suivent leur, leur trajet à l'heure. C'est tout. Merci. Monsieur Dorgeville. Le problème de, du transport en commun à Overbrook euh, est effectivement commun à toute la ville. On sait à quel point les bus sont, euh, ne sont pas fiables actuellement. Euh, moi, je pense qu'on euh, euh, peut, on peut effectivement essayer d'améliorer avec ce qu'on a, mais aussi on a besoin de plus de ressources. Euh, on, euh, on, une bonne politique euh, publique, généralement, c'est de mettre un prix sur les problèmes de société et de pouvoir payer avec le revenu extra euh, de payer pour les solutions. Euh, pour améliorer le transport en commun et euh, en, avoir moins de congestion, je pense qu'il faut que la congestion, on ait un prix euh, fixé dessus. Il y a une étude qui a été faite euh, par les euh, conseillers urbains euh, dans, dans, le dernier, dans les derniers 4 ans. Euh, et une manière de faire pourrait être d'avoir un prix sur le parking qui est prélevé et qui pourrait permettre de payer plus le transport en commun. Ce serait une, une méthode aussi pour pouvoir améliorer le bus et les transports en commun partout. Merci. OK, turning to table three for the next round of questions. The R4 zoning review may significantly impact Overbrook by loosening the restraints of certain R4 zoning provisions. What would you do to ensure that this process does not lead to unwanted impacts and more inappropriate infill development? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, being in Overbrook and being the community association president, we've been dealing with uh, planning and development issues over the last uh, uh, several uh, years and several decades that have not been beneficial to our neighborhood. So, I mean, we are seeing intensification uh, that is uh, just uh, too much. And because of that, while I was the president of the community association, we did seek to get infill two uh, bylaws actually uh, uh, put in this area, and that's something that I would still continue to seek. City staff denied us that. Th that bylaw would allow us to have a basically defines uh, character of development and ensures that any uh, developments next to an existing uh, house looks and feels it's the same, and I think that that's important, ensuring that the character of our neighborhoods are preserved. So I would pursue infill two for this area. Thank you. Mr. Horvath. Okay, thank you. Uh, my understanding of uh, the uh, R4 zoning is that it has to do a lot with rooming houses and then the amount of units within the actual building. My understanding is that they're under, it's under review at the moment. It's been through, a, it's a two-phase review. The first review uh, phase is, is, is completed now, and it's going into the second review that will be, um, I guess, published in 2020. Um, that's going to tighten up the loop, uh, close the loopholes and not allow developers to start uh, a project where they're planning to do a few rooms or a proper house and then suddenly uh, have eight or nine or 20 rooms in, in, a, in, a, in a dwelling. Um, my understanding is that it has to, um, the changes to the regulation is to um, ensure that all those units are self-contained units, so they have bathrooms, they have a kitchen uh, and washroom uh, and, and a bedroom, and it's gonna get away from having rooming houses throughout the uh, ward. Mr. Dorgeville. The problem with, uh, with the development or infield or larger development is usually that the consultation of a community arrive after the application has been brought to uh, the planning department. So we need to have a proactive approach where uh, the consultation happens before, before there is any uh, vision and money put by the developers into the project and where the, the, you cannot change that vision. Um, one thing I will also to mention is um, in any development, uh, the time that we need at the uh, planning department to process an application is very long, which means that we reduce the number of people who can really apply because it costs money to wait for your application to go through the planning department. So you really need to, to uh, enforce some kind of rules uh, at the planning department to make it short so there is more 
small developer and people who are interested by doing interesting development uh, to uh, be able to apply. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Thompson. Hello. Um, so I believe in communication right from the start of a project, and that is one of the campaign promises I can make when I'm alerted to a, a project that would change the character of a street or change the character of a neighborhood. This is a heritage neighborhood, and it should be treated as such. And infill two, um, I am in favor of infill two, uh, but I would need some more information on what it means per street. And I would like to see density, but not at expense of a neighborhood. I would like to see that around light rail. Thank you. Okay, Chris Penton's gonna cash in a chip. Everybody in this room should be concerned about this. Take a lesson from Sandy Hill. I used to sit in meetings with the uh, Action Sandy Hill fella, uh, Chad, and he would talk about Tim Moorman. He's the fellow that's heading this up. Take a lesson from Sandy Hill in that they, it got out of control before they could get it under control. Now there's a moratorium on these things. They're coming back. You now have a new pedestrian bridge. You've got the LRT coming. Students are gonna love this neighborhood because it's a less expensive option. And developers are gonna smell that. They're not gonna put parking in. Uh, this is very fear-mongering. The good part of this is, is population growth, which we do want, but we want the right kind of population growth. We have to keep an eye on this sort of development. So please, pay attention to the R4 zoning. It means something. Okay, <laughs> uh, moving to table four for the next round of questions. Cette question sera en français. Quel est votre plan pour assurer un avenir meilleur pour les jeunes d'Overbrook en regard aux défis liés à la pauvreté, à la consommation de drogue et à l'influence des gangs de rue? OK, bonjour. Um, pour la, la jeunesse, c'est important uh, de garder uh, et, et c'est uh, pour engager uh, la jeunesse, il y a beaucoup de façons. Um, dans cette quartier, uh, il y a une opportunité pour dans ce uh, centre de communauté uh, d'Overbrook, il y a beaucoup. Il y a aussi uh, l'opportunité avec uh, uh, les personnes dans les, les écoles, uh, dans uh, la ressource, uh, avec uh, Boys and Girls Club. Il y a beaucoup, beaucoup uh, de façons uh, d'engager. Et, et pour la planification, c'est important d'engager um, et je suis très heureux de travailler comme ça. Merci. Um, I don't have, sorry for speaking in English to, in response, I don't have much to add to, uh, to what Sheila just said, but uh, I would like to emphasize the importance of after school programs. It's definitely something uh, we have to give youth uh, opportunities. Um, uh, there has to be resources for resource centers, um, keep children out of trouble, uh, young people, um, make sports, if we can, more affordable, so that, uh, that the benefits of, of team sports and team activities can draw uh, our youth to more positive activities and uh, rather to, uh, to uh, more harmful and negative ones. Sorry again for the English. <laughs> Bonjour. Uh, C'est très important pour investir dans notre, um, dans notre jeune. Um, so my background has been working with youth. And so whenever I'm at the door and I see a youth, I get inspired because they're very engaged. They ask me questions at the door. Um, they ask me uh, municipal questions. And so some of the things I've done were working with youth to get them involved to feel important and that they have a stake in their neighborhood. That means putting in something like a mural, having them connect to mentors. So it could be business owners, artists, um, politicians, 
competition so that they can see what opportunities there are. Not everyone has mentors. Um, and so some people come from uh, different backgrounds that they're not exposed to these type of things. So we have to do our best as mentors to see what opportunities we can create for youth. And so always finding those, those chances to do that. And so for me, it's about early engagement, early um, involvement, and whatever we can do, we all play a role in investing in our youth. Absolutely. On parle de la jeunesse. Où sont les jeunes? Ils sont ici. Je suis là, vous êtes ici. Bon. Un autre jeune là-bas. Mais ce que je veux dire ici, que nous parlons de la jeunesse. On veut réveiller nos jeunes. On veut que nos jeunes soient faire partie de la table des décisions. Moi, je suis jeune. Moi, je connais la réalité. Je vis dans une maison portable. Je, je travaille un petit boulot au McDo. J'ai créé même mes pamphlets avec l'argent, mon petit income que je fais au McDo. Parce que je crois au changement. Je crois que la jeunesse a besoin de place pour s'exprimer. Ce qui m'inspire beaucoup, c'est un jeune qui a, qui, qui a une vision. Un jeune qui a une vision inspire. It is electrifying, si je peux utiliser ce mot. Et pour la jeunesse, laissez-le être à la table. C'est pour ça que je suis ici et je veux être leader et mentor aux autres jeunes dans cette communauté. Patrick Mayangi. Uh, Monsieur Hamels. Moi, je suis arrivé dix ans passé ici à Ottawa. Et c'était une des difficultés que nous, on avait. Qu'est-ce que nous pouvons faire comme parents pour que nos enfants se sentent bien dans leur nouvelle communauté? Et il y a deux choses que moi, j'ai utilisées. D'abord, on doit donner la fierté aux jeunes pour leur offrir des opportunités où ils peuvent être les meilleurs, les bien appréciés et, et, et qu'ils sont appréciés par tout le monde dans leur communauté. Ça, c'est une chose, donner la fierté aux jeunes, leur donner des occasions pour être fiers de ce qu'eux, ils peuvent créer. Deuxième chose, il faut réunir les parents pour ça aussi. Surtout les parents, comme moi j'étais aussi un immigrant, les, les familles immigrantes, on doit les réunir pour en parler comment eux, ils voient comment les jeunes peuvent être des Canadiens. Okay, we're going to um, move to the next round of questions. Uh, on commence à la table numéro un encore une fois avec une question en français. Uh, et, oh, je m'excuse, on, on va commencer avec Monsieur Ben Tahir cette fois-ci. C'est ça le format. <laughs> Alors, la question. Les arbres d'Overbrook ont été fortement affectés par la grille du frêne. That's the emerald ash borer for those that don't speak French. Euh, alors, les arbres d'Overbrook ont été fortement affectés par la grille du frêne, le sel et les camions de déneigement. Quelles sont les actions que vous entreprendrez comme conseiller municipal pour protéger les arbres et enjolier le quartier? Traduction, s'il vous plaît, madame. Pardon? Traduction, s'il vous plaît. Oui, bien sûr. So, the, the trees in Overbrook were severely affected by the emerald ash borer, salt, and the emerald ash borer, the insect, that, yeah, um, and the uh, snow plows. What actions would you take as, as a municipal councillor to protect the trees and beautify the community? Uh, this has been the issue that I have written about. The main problem is the snow. If we clean the snow right away, we will not have this expansion and contraction and the breakage of, of the tar, of, of the pavement. And that creates another problem. We have two, two uh, uh, weathers. One is snow and the other is road construction. Now, if we can uh, get rid of the snow right away, which is we have the ability to do that, we will not have all the pots and pans that we suffer from and the damage to the cars and people falling and having being hurt and on top of it the amount of money that goes into road construction every year uh, which is just mind-boggling and the salt we can use sand instead of salt uh, to eliminate 
Monsieur Faulkner. Sir. Um, you know, it would be interesting for somebody to make a map of the city and watch how the, the disease or the bug went across the city. Um, the policy of cutting a tree down, I, I actually cut a bunch of ash down in this area, and it went through a chipper cycle, then the chipper was brought to a municipal dump. Some people actually picked up a lot of the ash that we were cutting and wanted it for firewood and cross-contaminating wards by doing that. We have to eliminate the, the disease right away by, I don't know if we can incinerate or somehow burn the stuff that we bring to the landfills instead of putting it into a wind roll like to do with Christmas trees and try to compost it. Um, and maybe ask an arborist, my friend's an arborist, I can ask him, get you an answer on what's the best solution to this bug and what we should have really done. Thank you very much. Uh, Madame Ademic. Uh, so certainly, like I mentioned in my opening remarks, this is one of the most beautiful communities in, in the city, and uh, my priority is to make sure that we protect our green spaces. Uh, going back to sort of the, the trees that were affected by the infestation, um, certainly there's not a whole lot that we can do as a municipality. This is a natural sort of causing uh, issue in nature, but moving uh, forward to how we can beautify our community. So making sure that when developers come in into established neighborhoods like Overbrook, like the rest of our ward, making sure that we hold developers accountable to not removing mature trees on properties to build infill uh, properties, making sure that we protect these trees and making sure that we promote uh, the renewal of our environment by planting more trees is certainly a priority of mine. And also uh, echoing what my um, neighbor here said, using other substances for uh, uh, ice melting like sand or beet juice like other municipalities have done would certainly be a priority of mine. Monsieur La Mirande. Bien, écoutez, la question est assez, euh, est assez grande puis est assez euh, importante, mais euh, je dois dire que on ne peut pas, la ville d'Ottawa, abrier tous les arbres qu'il y a dans la ville d'Ottawa pour pas qu'ils soient infectés. Euh, C'est un problème qui ne date pas d'hier. On a vu ça avant ça, depuis beaucoup d'années qu'on a des problèmes comme ça, avec des insectes qui affectent les arbres. Donc, je pense que oui, il faut possiblement trouver des manières de préserver ça, mais je pense que les chercheurs cherchent encore. Donc, euh, je ne pense pas, moi, avoir la solution pour ça, sauf que qu'on peut faire tout ce qu'on peut faire en notre possible pour essayer d'éviter ou de protéger nos arbres d'une manière que ce soit. On a parlé du sel tantôt. Euh, oui, peut-être le sel affecte les arbres. Euh, si on met du sable, ça... En tout cas, je pense que c'est un problème qu'il faudrait laisser à des experts puis voir le résultat. Merci beaucoup. Oh, sorry, we have a, we have a chip being cashed in. Um, yes, please go ahead, Penny Thompson. Sorry, Mark. Hello. In 2013, I was the chair and then the vice chair of the Environmental Stewardship Advisory Committee for the City of Ottawa. In that role, the ESAC supported staff in the development of the environmentally sensitive land stewardship framework, which is the forest management strategy. Having a forest management strategy is a key step for the city and for residents to understand the importance of preserving and furthering growth and development of our trees and forests. Trees promote cleaner air and promote a greener city for Ottawa. With a plan and strategy in place, it becomes clear we are truly committed to this very important issue. Ecology Ottawa, I just want to give you a shout out for being a leader to plant one million trees. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is for table two, and we'll start with uh, Chris Penton. The question is, how will you convince the other councillors and mayor about the importance of the Building Better Revitalized Neighbourhoods Initiative to ensure adequate staff and financial resources to move forward with full implementation? 
Yeah, when I was uh, talking to, I started out with Steve McNamee. I'm not sure if he's here this, this evening. He was uh, a past president of the Overbrook Community Association, and uh, we sat down for a pint, and he told me about how it had been held up. It had been very held up, and it seems to me that there's a bunch of senior managers of the city that can't get their... Uh, I don't want to be too critical and say can't get their act together, but I don't think they want to get their act together for the Better Neighborhood study. It seemed, it, it's on hold, and it definitely, definitely benefits Overbrook more than most of the Ward 13. So we need to kickstart it. Uh, I would certainly do that if put in, in, uh, in council. Um, and there's a, some other, obviously there's some other neighborhoods around the city that will benefit from it as well. But it, uh, it seems to be latent at this point for no particular reason. Uh, I don't understand it. I would like to investigate it further. When we don't put in actions the plan we make, we actually lose money. Because when we do planning, we put time and money into assessing, doing assessments. So the goal is to move from a plan to an action. And often, the plan just stays on a table. And when it's time to act, we have to redo an assessment. That's what's happening with the bridge that's being proposed. It's always continuously like that and it's by putting numbers to what we're wasting when we don't act on the planning that we've done that uh, we need to convince other uh, city councillors to get on board and action, uh, take action when a plan is put in place. The Better Neighborhoods Plans, what I would do is together with the community associations mobilize citizens. One of the things where politicians listen to is if citizens speak out. If we take initiatives to show what we want to happen in our neighborhoods. It's true, there is uh, not much happening on this issue here uh, for Overbrook from the city out. The mayor is probably not immediately interested in pushing it, but that's one thing that we have to do is to mobilize, and I, as our counselor, is one of the things I would like to do with you is mobilizing you, create initiatives, petitions, other things, maybe visits with hundreds of us to City Hall to really show them this is what we want to happen in our, in our neighborhoods. That's one. Secondly, I have worked in a political system in Belgium where always compromises are made to get step by step to the solutions that you want. I'm willing to make compromises. I'm willing to work with others who don't agree. One of the big issues last year is that this city council did not respect community design plans. And with the new official plan being under consideration for the next year and a half, that means that this ward, along with the others, has an excellent opportunity to get involved at the grassroots level to influence the official plan. Because legally, the official plan guides everything else, the secondary plans and the community plans and the neighborhood plans, because only the official plan and the secondary plan are legally enforceable. The others are not. That's why I'm going to have a community office. That's why I'm going to have regular meetings in the ward at places such as this. That's why you're going to see me on the bus, on the streets, in the community, always consulting with people because as a lawyer and an advocate and a city councillor, that's what we do. We represent your views at City Hall. <laughs> no one else wants to jump in on that? Okay. The prochaine question, c'est pour la table numéro 3. C'est en français. Et on commence avec uh, Monsieur Horvath. Quelle est votre stratégie anti-pauvreté pour le quartier et quelle est la place du logement abordable dans cette stratégie? Merci. Uh, J'ai vu beaucoup d'initiatives uh, que le centre communautaire et la, la ville a a, a, a commencé et je pense qu'il a déjà a une stratégie en place pour assurer de, que les, les jeunes, les personnes euh, dans la pauvreté ont des services locaux comme les, les alimentaires euh, frais 
comme euh, les, euh, les, les uh, services de, de, de um, um, d'aider les, les jeunes qui ont des problèmes, um, to help the people, the, the uh, youth who have problems, to help the people with lodging, to ensure that um, um, the, house, the, the Ottawa community housing has sufficient resources to ensure that the units that they have are uh, acceptable and do not have um, undesirable uh, side effects come the um, cockroaches and bed bugs. Thank you. Euh, en novembre dernier, euh, il y a eu une réunion avec euh, les associations communautaires, euh, le pr euh, conseiller précédent Toby Nussbaum euh, et aussi les autres euh, niveaux de gouvernement provinciaux et fédéraux euh, pour commencer une initiative sur une stratégie de la pauvreté à la taille euh, du, de la circonscription, pas du quartier, mais de la circonscription. Euh, C'est une des, des initiatives qui, euh, qui m'intéresse le plus. Euh, que je sois élu ou que je ne sois pas élu, je, je veux que ça soit euh, quelque chose qui soit vraiment porteur. Le, le but, c'est de trouver, euh, de, ré, de rassembler les associations communautaires et les organisations communautaires avec assez de ressources pour euh, faire cette, euh, cette stratégie qui viendrait directement euh, des, des gens euh, sur place. Et il va falloir quelqu'un qui est capable de comprendre et de coordonner les trois niveaux de gouvernement pour que le financement soit là et que la stratégie vraiment se mette en place. Emily, may I please have the question in English? You may. Uh, what is your anti-poverty strategy, strategy for the neighborhood and what role does affordable housing have to play in that strategy? Well, everyone deserves a place to call home and Every citizen deserves the opportunity, the same opportunities to have shelter and a lock and just know when you put yourself to bed that night, you, you are not under threat. So to child poverty, is this what, child poverty, so poverty. Yeah. the Rideau Rockcliffe, so I sat for two terms on the Rideau Rockcliffe Community Resource Center. And child poverty is, sir, pardon me, poverty is one of the four pillars of the Rideau Rockcliffe Community Center's uh, uh, crux of uh, programming. So this is a good opportunity. If anyone has not familiar with the Rideau Rockcliffe Community Center, please go there and see their excellent programming and their client service. Thank you. Well, we've been dealing with poverty in this ward uh, for a tremendous period of time. As, a, as the community association president, I've been working with other community association presidents on a poverty alleviation strategy. That is one of the reasons why I'm running, is because I want to see that continue. Toby Nussbaum was starting to lead this process with our local MP and MPP. It's really important because in the social housing, the concentrated social housing that we have in this community, uh, we have 50% of children living in poverty. That is unacceptable. We've been trying to ensure that we've had more investments in educational opportunities, recreational opportunities in this area, and I want to see that extended across the ward because the amount of poverty that we have is unbelievable, and we do need to invest in affordable housing. Absolutely, and maintenance, because I've been door knocking in buildings that other candidates might not want to go into, and people are looking for change, and that's why I'm primarily running, is a progressive, I have a progressive platform for more investment in our- Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's hard to cut them off. You gotta do it, it's like, it's my job. Um, are there, yes, we have a, a chit from Monsieur uh, Lamirande. <laughs> Could you stand back behind your table, please, sir? Thank you. How come you're so strict <laughs> with me, not with the others? Okay. Premièrement, pour répondre à la question, je dois vous dire que ce que mon ami vient de dire, c'est totalement vrai. On peut parler tant qu'on voudra d'avoir des revenus, des, des, des résidences à revenus euh, faibles. 
pour les aînés, pour les gens qui travaillent, qui ne gagnent pas un gros salaire. C'est beau. Oui, ça n'en prend encore plus. Mais les aînés, qu'est-ce qu'on a fait avec les aînés? Qu'est-ce qu'on a fait avec les aînés? On a construit des édifices pour les aînés. Dans le temps que c'était la province de l'Ontario qui s'en occupait, il y avait des surintendants, il y avait de la sécurité. Maintenant que c'est la ville d'Ottawa qui s'en occupe, il n'y a plus de surintendants, pas de sécurité. Je m'excuse, on a un gros problème. <coughs> Excusez. C'est beau d'avoir de, des, des, des édifices pour les, les revenus moyens ou les, les faibles revenus, mais il faut les entretenir. Exactement ce que monsieur vient de dire. J'en ai visité, moi, que j'ai rentré par la porte en avant, puis je voulais tout de suite sortir par la porte en arrière. C'est sale, vous ne voulez pas aller là. Il faut les entretenir. La ville s'en occupe simplement pas comme c'est là. Merci. <rires> We have another chit. Mr. Mayang. Oh, no, wait, you've already used a chit. You only get to use it oh. once. Sorry. <laughs> Keeping track. Uh, okay, anyone else? No, okay. Uh, so, to table, fo uh, table four, uh, the question will, we'll start with Mr. Hike, and the question is as follows. The city has started the process of creating a new official plan. Name a policy direction that you would like to see maintained or strengthened in the new official plan, and a policy direction you do not want to see in the new official plan. It's a hard question. You've got 60 seconds to answer it. <laughs> well, I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that phase two of LRT is a part of the official plan. Um, I, uh, not to be trite about it, it's no joking matter, I would make sure that we get phase one up and running before we start talking about phase two. It's good to plan, and I'm, I'm fully in, in, uh, in support of LRT and expanding it to all the communities throughout of Ottawa. I would like to reduce the amount of traffic on our roads, but I would like to see more transparency, and um, I would like to find out why there's cost overruns. Um, why, why is the system not on track, and uh, where's the money going, and why are there only single source bidders that are allowed to bid on these projects, so I would say transparency is the key. Um, uh, so I am for LRT, I am more for transparency. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie Kwong. So this is a very exciting time. Right now, the city is undergoing the next official plan. So for this next year, they're looking at community consultation. They are phasing out the community design plans because that regularly had no teeth. And once it becomes policy, that's what they see has teeth. And we've still repeatedly seen city council renege on things that are in the official plan. There's policy, and they go against it, and they make decisions that go against the neighborhood that don't build in alignment with the community and the characteristics of that community. One of the key things of the official plan, it needs a consultation. That means you right now have to get your word in so that it becomes policy. Two, we have to hold our city councillors accountable. That means that a principle needs to be upheld. The official plan will affect all of our city. And that means when something happens in one of our wards, it could impact another ward too. So it's about upholding the principle of honouring the policy that we create. So let's create that official plan together. Get your voice in. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a cold. Once more, um, the official plan. Like I said, the city is not as transparent as we want it to be. There's lack of voices, youthful voices, other people's voices out there. So what, what I would like to see is actually inclusionary zoning and for affordable housing. I live in affordable housing and I know what it is to basically um, um, even um, all the phone calls and trying to reach for maintenance and all that. But again, um, transparency in the RRT. Again, I want to bring together the community. If this official plan is supposed to be worked out, I want your input on it. We need voices, different voices, voices that will reflect the community. And this is why I'm running to listen to you. Rensemble nous, Rita Rockliffe. Ms. Perry. Thank you for the question. This is very dear and near to my heart. I was a chair of the Federation of Community Associations Planning and Zoning Committee and former chair of the Overbrook one. 
Uh, very fast forward, this is a huge opportunity for everybody to be engaged in this. And the exciting thing is we have new staff and new thinking at City Hall. Steve Willis, who we've been working really closely with, we held a forum last year. And we called it, Ottawa is a city of neighborhoods. And we are starting brand new. That is exciting. So that means we can be engaged. So to me, this is a way to strengthen our communities and our neighborhoods. That includes the zoning, and by the way, it does include the TMP, the Transportation Master Plan, so let's get it right. What I don't want, I don't want to see so many amendments. We have over 3,000 amendments currently we're dealing with with the official plan. That's not fair to any neighbor. Thank you. Je pense que vous avez déjà employé votre chit. C'est juste une fois. Je m'excuse. Anyone else? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, in the interest of time, I'm just being mindful of getting this right, friends. Uh, we're going to move on to the short, snappy, sort of uh, more personal questions or an opportunity to highlight a little bit about yourself. Uh, je vais demander chaque question en anglais et en français. Vous pouvez répondre dans la langue de votre choix. Et vous auriez 15 secondes. You only have 15 seconds to answer the question. I object, Your Honor. <laughs> Overruled. Yes, uh, Madam Timer is recalibrating the timer. I think it might implode. <laughs> we'll start at table one. We'll start with Mr. Faulkner. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> okay. In, I, I'm asking it in both languages to give the candidates that little extra moment to think about their answer. So the question is, what was your favorite comfort food as a child, and do you still eat it today? Quel était votre aliment réconfortant préféré quand vous étiez enfant, et le mangez-vous encore aujourd'hui? Chinese, and it was when my dad made it, only when my dad made it, and unfortunately, no, I don't eat it anymore. Second yep. question? Oui. Uh, yeah. So with my Polish roots, I grew up eating homemade pierogies, and you can see by the size of my waist, I ate a lot of them. <laughs> uh, so certainly pierogies. <laughs> Monsieur Lamirand. With no, sour no, 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 no. Passing oh, it back. We're at table sorry, one. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> French fries. Still does the day. And hot dogs. <laughs> and jewelry and a Pepsi. Thank you very much. <laughs> so when I traveled around the world, um, I ate the food what the natives were eating. And the rest of the air crew were saying, why do you eat this food? And I said, look, you see the natives, they haven't died. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other was. Oh, time. <laughs> OK, for table two. Uh, yeah, we'll start with uh, Oriana, uh, Gabi Rano. OK. If you could have dinner with one person, living or dead, who would it be and why? And just for the purposes of the question, you can assume that the person is living at the time of the uh, dinner. Alors, si vous pouviez dîner avec une seule personne, vivante ou morte, qui serait ce et pourquoi? Et au fin de la question, vous pouvez supposer que la personne vit au moment de la conversation. Oh, it would probably be my daughter. It's who I spend the most time with. Ma fille avec qui je passe le plus de temps. <laughs> I would like to have a dinner with my mom. She, she died in 2005. I can't wait. <laughs> um, after the last answer, and I respectfully mean this, um, no, Elvis Presley. <laughs> I would, you ain't nothing but a hum dog. You know, I'd love to have dinner and drinks with Elvis Presley. <laughs> I couldn't keep up drinking with Elvis Presley. Uh, J'ai seulement un choix. It's the captain of the Starship Enterprise, Jean-Luc Picard. Ooh, we went fictional. Bold, bold. <laughs> OK, uh, table three. Brace yourselves. Just kidding. You're all right. Calm down. Uh, Anglais, Francais, whatever, whatever language of your choice. 
Uh, people often say that Ottawa is the city that fun forgot. How would you respond to such an unfair assertion? Les gens disent souvent que Ottawa est la ville qui le, que le plaisir a oublié. Que répondriez-vous à une affirmation aussi injuste? Et oui, on commence avec M. Dorgeville. Je suis arrivé en 2011 euh, avec ma famille et j'avoue que j'adore Ottawa euh, pour une vie familiale et avec tellement d'accès euh, à toute la verdure et à l'extérieur et à toutes les activités qu'on peut faire, ainsi que tous les musées. I would say, no, we are the city of festivals, and my particular preference is music festivals, and the folk festival is my ultimate favorite. <laughs> I would have to also agree on the cultural front. Um, I was the president of Gallery 101, which is an artist-run center. Uh, we have an amazing art scene in this city, and most people don't realize it. So I would say take advantage of the new gallery, check out some of the art centers that we have. We have SAW, we have these wonderful centers, so check them out. 15 seconds goes by quick, doesn't it? <laughs> For me, it would have to be the outdoors and the Gatineau Hills and the, your accessibility to go cross-country skiing, to go skating, to go biking, and to uh, go swimming in the lakes. Okay, table four. Uh, name a movie or television series that you've enjoyed in the past six months and why. Citez un film ou une série télévisée que vous avez apprécié au cours des six derniers mois. And we're starting with uh, Jamie Kwong. <laughs> so I have an on again, off again relationship. Wait, wait, you need your mic. Sorry, because of our friends at Rogers. I have an on again, off again relationship with Netflix. I get sucked into about 10 episodes all in one time, and I know I shouldn't. But the bodyguard, yeah, I got sucked into that. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I have to break up with Netflix now, again. <laughs> I guess Netflix it is. Um, for me, it was a couple of shows, actually. Uh, the Last Kingdom. I mean, I'm more into historical fiction, and that one has to do with um, Vikings and Alfred the Great and British Islands. It's very historic. Oh, <laughs> time. Uh, I would say my favorite show is Star Trek Discovery um, because um, uh, I like to dream and the possibilities are endless. <laughs> oh, when do we watch movies? <laughs> um, in seriousness, I really loved the TVO series. Uh, it was a North uh, series that took you across the Arctic, and I had the opportunity to do that two years ago. It was fantastic. And uh, just for fun, dog stories like $101. <laughs> well, I was going to ask a question, cats or dogs, but we got your answer preemptively, and unfortunately, we don't have time for another round. Um, and so, with that being said, uh, we will uh, move to the closing statements. Uh, and in the interests of fairness, the closing statements will be delivered in the reverse order as the opening statements. And so, uh, the candidates have one minute for their closing statement, and we'll start with you, uh, Monsieur Mangi. Thank you. Bon, comme je dis, je suis Patrick Mayangi et je me présente comme candidat pour euh, conseiller municipal. Euh, J'ai tout dit, vous savez mon âge. Et euh, ce que je veux faire, uh, what I want to do is actually inspire. I mean, it takes a lot of guts to stand right here and basically to speak to you people. I want to bring the youth and tell you guys that nothing is impossible. I may not have a lot, but I do have a mind that is open and willing to serve. Leadership is about service, and I think that that's what they're forgetting. I mean, again, I want to bring this community together and think about the possibilities of what we can do. Let's make history. Let's be progressive, and let's be bold. Vote Patrick Mayango on April 15th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I want to continue doing great work for this community, having navigated City Hall to address concerns that affect our main streets. I want to take all of that knowledge, all of the relationships that I've built on uh, various levels of government, with various departments, various groups in our community, and continue doing that great work. One of the things I would bring is making sure that collaboration is a key component, that we're all working together to address the issues and to bring together those solutions. And together we create those best practices that play out in our neighborhood so that we build a community that we're proud of, not just for ourselves, but for the next generations. And so I'm excited to work with you. I'm excited to bring people on board and to listen to what the concerns are and to turn that into a reality so that we improve the day-to-day -day quality of life of each and every one of you and your children. Thank you. Thank you very much. So not so much a closing statement, but more of a request. I'd like to request two things. Find a friend or find a neighbor who doesn't recycle enough and ensure that they do. Uh, some studies suggest that up to 50% of our garbage, instead of uh, being recycled, is actually ending up in the landfill. Excuse me. Second. Find a friend, find a neighbor, and ensure that they vote. Or if they're on the fence, find out why they're on the fence, tell them about what you heard here tonight, and make sure on the 15th they go out and vote. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, I want to just say how proud I am that we are hosting this here in Overbrook. Um, as uh, Ward 13 is so diverse, we have to elect somebody who has the experience, the leadership, the vision and real action. And I believe I hold all those three cards. But most important, people matter, places matter. And how do we build those partnerships? And we have a huge opportunity here. Rideau High School is one of the ones that is my big baby right now on this one. I've been active since 1989. I believe my track record is solid. And I look for your vote on April 5th and 15th. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I understand that people are the greatest assets that Ottawa has. And I... <laughs> Pause the clock, please. <laughs> yeah, we can just start over again. I think it's okay. Hello? Penny okay, broke there. the mic. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Um, so you've heard from a lot of candidates tonight, and you have a choice to make. My key priorities are better transit and dependable transit, better communication between the city and residents, affordable housing solutions, road safety, and I am committed to embettering the livability of our ward and of our city. With my 25 years of experience for our communities, we can make Rideau Rockcliffe better together. Thank you, merci. Thank you for this opportunity to share part of my vision of a compassionate and climate-friendly city. Like your previous councillor, I want Rita Rockcliffe to be an example of that vision. A ward where people walk, cycle, and take the bus if they can, where planning is made for and with communities, where city, service, city services help the most vulnerable and nurture stronger neighborhoods. On April 15, you can choose both a community worker who will listen to your concerns and an engineer who can make sense of the complexity of City Hall to address those concerns. I will bring a fresh eye to act on climate and poverty. Le 15 avril, votez Marc d'Orgeville parce qu'on peut changer tous ensemble. So thank you, you've heard many issues that are in the ward tonight. Um, I would just like to say that please uh, get behind whoever has voted in on uh, April 15th and ensure that we try and get the city to make sure that our basic services are running properly and that nobody is left behind uh, at a bus stop. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much for attending tonight. It's always wonderful to see the hall in the center filled like this. I think civic engagement is important, and that's one of the primary reasons why I'm running. I've been dedicated to this community. I think that we need to have a strong leader around the table who has been fighting for communities, fighting for uh, things including poverty alleviation, fighting for uh, public safety. I think that we need to have a more progressive vision at City Hall, and that's why I'm running. On climate change, on investments in our community, we absolutely need to have more sustainable investments in our neighborhoods. So on April 15th, vote King. Thank you very much. Merci bien pour cette soirée. Je trouve ça très important qu'on peut se parler et se écouter aussi. I have three priorities in this campaign that I talk about at the doors of the people. One is that the city should take the citizens serious and should find ways to listen earlier to them and also to engage them in projects. Secondly, that the city should have a commitment in investing at least four years, not just one budget year, in affordable housing. And three, that the city should create the streets that are safe for everyone, walkers, cyclists, drivers, and people who use the bus. As a politician in Belgium, I have been a provincial councillor for six years. This is what I bring with me, and I've worked in three continents on political organizing. But there is one promise I want to make. I believe in, in limits for serving a term as a councillor. If I'm elected, I will maximally do, maximum do two terms. <laughs> la planification pour la durabilité passe nécessairement par une vision préventive. C'est cette, vi cette vision qui bâtit ma plateforme. Je vous encourage à regarder les actions concrètes que je veux mettre en place et partager vos commentaires avec moi sur mon site web www.voteoriana.ca. If we're planning for a sustainable Ottawa, well, we need to do so with a preventive lens. That's why I'm running, and I encourage you to check my platform and share your comments on a concrete action I wish to take as a, as a city councillor. Thank you very much for your engagement. Merci pour votre engagement. Merci d'être là aujourd'hui. Thank you for being here today. Je m'ai trompé un petit peu tantôt avec, euh, en français avec ma, ma, ma réponse sur le transport, je m'excuse, mais je crois vraiment que dans une, euh, un quartier de 30% francophone, c'est important, non, c'est impératif que votre prochain conseiller euh, s'exprime bien en français. On the uh, economic development thing that I threw out there, I believe it is the answer because once you have a strong economy, things like transportation, development, safety, climate, those all fall into place. With a strong economy, we can do all those sorts of things. Thank you. This is not about what I want. This is not about what the other 15 people up here want. This is about you and what you want. This is about your street, your neighborhood, your community. Your city councillor represents you at city councillor. And as a lawyer, I know what it's like to represent clients in courtrooms. As someone who's worked in the legal department of a municipality, I know what it's like to work at city hall. So this is about representing you fearlessly, with dedication, with compassion, and with a great deal of respect, making sure that you, because you know what's best for your street, that you're well represented at city council. That's why I intend to only make this promise, that I always will be approachable, effective, and on your side. Thank you very much for having us today, and thank you to the Overbrook Community Association for organizing this great night. Uh, working with nonprofit communities and working with top des decision makers in Canada have taught me the need to make effective uh, and formative relationships with community members, making sure that we put the importance of collaboration and putting the community needs first. Uh, I look forward to working with you in partnership to make things, getting things done for our community, and I'm also very. Um, 
happy to say that I am running a grassroots campaign. I have no political parties backing me behind the scenes. I have no developer money. And Transparency at Council starts here on the campaign trail. And uh, I promise to bring my energy, passion, determination, and political experience in delivering results for you and the rest of our community. We need more strong and independent voices at the Council table. So vote for me, Kasha Adamic, on April 15th. Thank you. I, I like to echo those comments. Uh, I think we need transparency in the campaign trail, and he would, I think everybody needs to know what every candidate is about and who's backing them. My commitment is to the city of Ottawa and then the ward, because we're not an island unto ourselves, people. We're not going to sink or swim by ourselves. We have to work together with multiple wards, with multiple councillors. That's my commitment to you. I will work with other councillors on your behalf. I'll work at city council. I'll work for the, with the mayor but I work for you if elected. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the moderator for having the stamina to stand up there for <laughs> two hours. <laughs> uh, secondly, there is Mr. Brian McGarry. He has kept me honest here, so I can't make up any, any stories. Um, my modus operandi, or the doctrine of operation, has been to go for the cause, not for the symptoms that we see, poverty or uh, crimes or uh, homelessness, but find out what it is. For instance, I, I was asked by the minister to write uh, a solution to the Japanese Canadian incarceration from 1942 to 45 with all their properties movable and immovable was taken away from them. And uh, so I came up with a solution and they got $288 million awarded as well as an apology from Prime Minister Brian Mulroney in 1988 on the 22nd of September. Time's up. <laughs> Alors, euh, merci beaucoup à Overbrook pour nous avoir invités. Euh, merci à vous d'être là. Et euh, je dois vous dire que les ingrédients nécessaires, je pense, que pour avoir un bon conseiller municipal, c'est d'avoir une personne avec de l'expérience, une bonne canne, une personne avec de l'expérience puis du leadership. Moi, je pense que j'ai ça. Je, pas, je pense, je le sais. Euh, j'ai été élu conseiller scolaire pendant deux termes pour le Conseil des écoles catholiques de langue française d'Ottawa. J'ai euh, servi euh, euh, pour la Commission des libérations conditionnelles pendant trois ans, donc j'ai l'expérience sur comment faire des décisions. Et puis, euh, comme j'ai dit à Mike euh, Sockluff aujourd'hui, c'est qu'à la Ville d'Ottawa, de la façon que ça fonctionne comme c'est là, c'est qu'on remet les documents de, du petit train léger au conseiller municipal, on remet tous les documents, on dit « lisez ça, on va fermer les lumières pendant que vous allez lire ça ». Après ça, quand on rouvre les lumières, bien, vous votez. C'est à peu près ça qu'ils ont fait. Ils ont voté après avoir les questions répondues. Donc, euh, je pense qu'il faut faire les choses autrement. Il faut s'appliquer, puis il faut prendre du leadership. Je pense que j'ai le leadership nécessaire. Puis merci beaucoup. So, I don't want to brag, but we're done a few minutes early. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, we're done a few minutes early. Great. Let's wrap it up and start the social hour. False. This uh, is being recorded by Rogers. <laughs> We have a time frame that we need to fill. Uh, and so, you know, what we're going to do is just one really quick more round of the short questions, and then I'll move on to my thank yous. Uh, because I know you wanted more, because that was really amusing. And let's have a little bit more amusement before we wrap it up. Uh, and then, of course, you're all invited to, to stay and, uh, and ask any of the candidates um, that are able to stick around your questions. We'll start um, at this end and make our way back. Uh, and I've got, once again, and just quick groups of short questions. Uh, I've never seen closing statements where so many candidates did not use their full minute. <laughs> okay, yes, bravo, Madam Timekeeper. Uh, so, my question for table four, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Si vous pouviez voyager n'importe où dans le monde, où iriez-vous et pourquoi? Je crois que c'est uh, Berlin. J'ai vécu euh, une année à Berlin et euh, je trouvais ça vraiment chouette. Transportation, bike lanes, <laughs> sorry, and excitement there. Uh, I mean, why don't we just copy Berlin and bring it here? Your 15 seconds are up. <laughs> 
I'm bringing back my iron fist. Uh, yeah, Jamie Kwong. Hmm, I think under the sea. Yeah, I like sea creatures. It's beautiful under there. All the different uh, coral reefs, all the beautiful species in there, and it's just another world, and it's not often available. So if I could travel somewhere right now, it'd be under the sea. Mm. My choice is close to Jamie's. I would love to go to Barbados because I have family there and it's paradise. So what more can you ask for? <laughs> Fair point. I feel I've been very fortunate to be on exchanges in Japan, China, uh, Italy, Denmark, and uh, yet I've never been to New Zealand, and I love cycling, and that's one of the places I'd love to be at some point. Um, the other choice I would put in was the Arctic. Very special. <laughs> okay, for table three, I have a hard-hitting question for you. Uh, for our Rogers uh, viewers, this is basically journalism, what's happening right now. Uh, and my question is, Cake or pie? <laughs> and in answering, you can choose to share uh, your favorite place from which to procure either item. Alors, c'est gâteau ou tarte? Pie. And I'm very proud to say, with the help of the Meisners who are here tonight, I was the pie champion of Manor Park in 2015. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> this is tart and rhubarb tart. I just, the taste, the mix of the sweet and sour, it's just <laughs> wonderful. For me, it's a flourless chocolate cheesecake from the Chateau Laurier. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> the ooing and aahing in the room is something. I, I have very simple tastes. Apple pie from anywhere. <laughs> Okay, table two. How old were you when you first became interested in politics? Quel âge aviez-vous lorsque vous êtes uh, vous êtes intéressé à la politique pour la première fois? I remember that very well. That was in '69 when Allende was elected in Chile. I, c I wouldn't be able to give an exact date as I've always been debating on every subject. So I like to uh, just explore uh, new ideas and be debating on is this the best way to do things. So I guess my mindset has been in that area for a long time. I guess it depends what you mean by politics, but uh, uh, municipal politics, definitely when I first saw Metro Fleury speak. Yeah. He influenced me. Um, what if I don't like that question? <laughs> You're out of luck. I'm the boss. <laughs> and what if I want to change my answer to a previous question? I believe, uh, Mr. Kovacs, in the instructions, I said very clearly that all candidates will be expected to answer the question as asked. <laughs> I, uh, I don't take instructions well from other lawyers. <laughs> but, but listen... In this I, case, if, I'm the judge, Mr. Uh, Kovacs. One of the people... One and and uh, <laughs> but uh, no no that was, I, I used his time okay go ahead. I'm going to quickly say that John Diefenbaker and that's with all greatest respect to Brian McGarry in the back who organized one of the most amazing funerals in 1979 that I ever saw. <laughs> oh okay. Uh, the last question, I kind of spoiled it a bit earlier, but are you a cat person or a dog person, <laughs> and why? Préférez-vous les chats ou les chiens, et important, important pourquoi? Uh, so certainly a dog person. My husband and I adopted a failed guide dog, so we have a loser puppy at home, but uh, she's wonderful, and uh, she's very obedient, and at the end of the day, uh, it's man's best friend, so when the guy over there by my signs, you know, isn't having me, the dog is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dogs and man's best friend. <laughs> well, I think I've said whatever. It's, it's over now. <laughs> I don't have anything I've said must say. say. J'ai pas de chat, pas de chien, mais j'aime les deux. Donc, euh, j'ai pas de préférence comme tel. Le chat ou le chien, ça va. <laughs> Okay, mais parfait. Merci à tous les candidats. But, uh, let's give all the candidates a round of applause. It's, it's, not, it's not nothing to put your
yourself out there like this, and I have to say to all of you, you are in a very privileged position to have such an incredible roster of candidates to select from. It's going to be very difficult, I know, for all of you on election day to make your choice, but I hope that um, this event this evening has given you, you know, some, some new information and context within which to make that decision. Uh, I'd like to thank enormously the organizers of this debate. This was a challenge to find a format that was going to work for this many candidates, and I'm really grateful. I can't name everyone, but maybe the people that were involved in organizing could quickly stand. Um, and in particular, thanks to our timekeeper, <laughs> Joe Stinton. Thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you to Rogers um, for taking this on as well, because um, you know we need to reach as many people as possible. This is an important exercise that we're going through here, and I'm grateful that uh, those who weren't able to come this evening will have that chance. Uh, et merci à tout le monde qui uh, a donné une partie de leur soirée ce soir pour être parmi nous, uh, pour être engagé comme vous êtes uh, dans cet exercice uh, de démocratie. C'est vraiment important. C'est très difficile lors des élections partielles d'avoir un engagement uh, réel um, avec les enjeux, avec les candidats. Alors merci beaucoup à tout le monde ici ce soir. For those that are watching, there's like there's over 120 people in this room, and that's not nothing. That's a testament to the organizers, to the quality of the candidates. Um, so thank you everyone who submitted questions uh, and who chose to get involved in this process and I think we have someone who'd like to say another couple words quickly before we adjourn. Yeah, uh, from the Overbrook Association, we want to thank the, all the candidates to be here. Uh, merci à tous les candidats. Uh, we want to thank all of you here. We are very happy to have all of you. On est vraiment content de vous avoir tous. Uh, also all the volunteers. So there are a lot of people who make that happen. So, uh, merci à tous les volontaires. And especially also thank you to Emily for all her nice <laughs> sharing and helping. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. So with that being said, you're all invited to um, uh, stick around for a little bit if you have the time. This is, will be your chance. You know, we, our candidates only got to answer a couple of questions. I know it's been a long evening, but please do feel free to mingle in the room to meet your candidates. Uh, thank you so much. Merci à tout le monde et passez une très, très belle soirée.